This is closed, and we're yeah. So the I'm just gonna start. No, we have, we have no call to for that matter. order no. of the um, December 14 um, Conservation Commission meeting. So, sorry, Bob. What are you going to comment about something? Oh, just the, there are no mics. It's no, okay. No. I think they, there are some anyway. Mm. Um, first item of business is the order of conditions for. Uh, 738 Pearl Street, Michael and Kelly Fitzgerald. Any questions? Any discussion? So the uh, last week we discussed um, the project at um, yeah 738 Pearl Street and closed the meeting. And I've prepared the order of conditions and I got some comments from Jack and. Uh, not sure. I have some com we have some erosion control comments that may be discussed. Um, what type of comments? Do you want erosion to control. It's just the, the need. I think um, Steve, yeah. Steve O'Neill, who's the contractor, uh, wanted to use a straw wattle for this project, and I said that we typically don't allow straw wattles for a full foundation. So the choices are mulch sack or hay bale and silt fence. I left that message with Mike earlier, so I don't know if you wanted. The only reason why I brought it up is well, I've been building in Reading for 28 years, and I always used either hay bales or straw wattle, and the price difference is four to five times as much for a 12-inch mulch socket. But yeah. roughly minimum is $1,500 when you can usually do it for $300. So that was Does my hay concern work? yesterday because I already had the bit out there, and I haven't used a mulch sock before. And I've done plenty of jobs in Reading, so I was just wondering what the great benefit would be to this 12-inch mold sock, and why the extra cost, um, and when was it imposed? Because I've just done projects recently with Waddle. And but you're saying hay bale would be fine. That that's a savings. Uh, hay bale or the um, regular silt sock. So it's hay bale and silt fence, or, uh, yeah, well, or well, mulch. <coughs> so if you're satisfied with the hay but bale, but you don't like the Waddle. Is that what you're saying? Does that, that, that straw wattle flattens out. It's hardly there. It's winter time, and for big construction, you can't see what's going on. So it's going to disappear quickly. So there, there's really it has no benefit on big projects. Um, you know, that's kind of what I, my opinion that, of it. And that's been the the general approach the commi this commission has taken for projects like this. Um, we we do accept hay bale and uh, silt fence it. Most people at this point like to go with the mulch sock instead, um, just because it's easier set up, easier to take down. But the the hay well, bale is certainly acceptable. Over a thousand extra dollars that I didn't figure, my, and I can't really go to Mike and say, hey. Well, I think the drawings even indicated that it would be a 12 inch. It did, and, and I had spoke to Jack. Oh, sorry, Steve, I don't mean to no, interject here. Okay. When I had sp spoke to Jack about uh, the project itself. I'm a novice at this, you know, yeah. as the whole project's going on. And, you know, Steve and I agreed on a bid together. And then when uh, Steve was pricing out the mulch sock, which is in the plan, um, the, it's a financial burden on either one of us to do that if we can accomplish the job with something cheaper. And we would be asking the board to uh, allow something cheaper as it won't be a financial burden to either one of us for the project. So, uh, you know, but if, if the hay bales are still acceptable, it's yeah. just the hay bales small. are fine. Yeah, hay no, that was fine. always fine. fine. Yeah. You so could you could use hay bale or the mulch sock, no matter what. As a matter of fact, I actually changed the order of conditions to say mulch sock because that's I didn't where we were going. So you and I can change it back. But okay. and the other thing is, uh, we, as long as you use erosion control, that's that's hay bale and silt fence. It should be fine. It, okay. it, it will be fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and it's multi-purpose, I, I believe. You know, uh, it's um, it's the erosion control, but it's also limit of work, visible, mm -hmm. good visible boundary. So um, so we're going with hay bale, it sounds like. And silt fence. And silt yep. fence. Okay. And uh, I think, uh, just to let you know, since we're talking about as it's happening, I'm going to actually decrease the, uh, the, the length of the erosion control barrier because 
it seems to wrap around the projects, but I don't think it's needed on uh, the right-hand side, but not on the left-hand side. So just along the back, and they'll turn up that corner. Is that because of slope, or just it's not a far enough away? Yeah, it's the, someone, someone's area, house it's is not, over there, and on concerned. the other side, there's a there's a wetland. So it's within it's basically within 30 feet of a wetland on the right-hand side. Okay. So that's the right-hand side is looking at it from the street. Street, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it would be from the right-hand side of the street around the back to the left-hand rear corner, but not up the left-hand side. Right. I think is what you're saying. Yeah. It's down the back. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay, any other items? I have a question. It was just something that was uh, written in the order conditions, and it has to do with the, uh, the all the one is et cetera, et cetera, uh, in perpetuity, preserve and maintain a perpetuity in natural forest condition, 25-foot zone of natural ve vegetation. In the stone and concrete bounds. Uh, currently, the their edge of lawn is already inside that 25-foot zone of natural vegetation. Um, are we going to allow him to maintain edge of lawn currently where it is, or does that mean that once he finishes this project, that from the concrete bounds for, forward, where he currently has lawn, is going to be expected to be back to natural vegetation. So I'm going to jump out first. The, that boilerplate stuff, I usually don't go through and change that every single time, yeah. but we allow people this uh, grandfathered right. condition of their property. Right. So, but I, but I haven't in the past ever changed any of that right. boilerplate language. Sometimes we might ask an applicant to consider um, losing a little bit of lawn if they're asking for a variance and right. they want to, you know, and we're looking for a betterment of the wetland habitat area, but I don't think we've got that scenario here. Just with that in mind, um, do we have an idea of where the, I, I had mentioned this to you, Chuck, when we were reviewing the, when I was reviewing the order of conditions, but I figured it was worth bringing up to the, the commission. Do we have a, an idea in mind where we would expect the concrete, the, the, the granite balance to be? Just because this is an interesting... Yeah, so I did talk to Steve about this okay. and realized that it wasn't something that we did talk about, so we should talk about it now, but I, but I do have a suggestion based on a past project. So what makes this different is um, Mike has kids, and I'm a little leery of putting granite bounds, even flush with the surface of the ground, um, on his lawn. Mm -hmm. So we decided, or we, I talked about you know, having two at the edge of the, of, um, property. the property line right. and have those a foot above, eight to a foot above. And then we've, what we've done in the past is we've buried rebar so you could find those with a metal detector in the ground uh, on those other spots and just left it. Can we make sure that's written in somewhere mm -hmm. so that there's a paper trail I as well? I can change that, yeah. Because otherwise, we don't do that on every project. So is that acceptable? I mean, you're not so, going to end up finding those later. No, no, I, I understand what you're saying. So just looking at this plan here, I, I have grass, the lawn that I, it's been in since I bought the property 10 years ago, to the edge of the lawn area back here. I would like to maintain the current grass in this area. That, I don't want to lose that. Yeah. No, we didn't, didn't take issue with that. It we was a discussion. Okay, no. yeah, I, that's something. I, no, I, that's what he's, Chuck said, he kind of grandfathered in. So it's like a boy of like thing. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But so, I'm going to show. How do, you, how do you straighten out the right hand side? Yeah, so this here, say we put a granite father in. Right there, yeah. And then where you're thinking of putting one on so the other side so the kids does, don't every, get it. You have the, is it 20 feet or 40 feet? 40 feet to be every day. Every 40 yeah. feet, you're going to have to bury a piece of rebar. Okay, so this is and 120, so it'll be points. two in the middle. Yeah, and then at turning points, you're going to put one here, then you're going to go another 40. And when you come out on the 25, you're going to see a granite bound right here. Okay. So two granite bounds. Granite bound, rebar, buried, so you can find it with a metal detector every 40 feet. Every 40 feet along okay, that that's 25 easy. foot line. Right, so the grass will stay from yeah, that you're line. Not, you're not losing adding to any your grass or losing any okay. grass. Okay, all right, great. That's important to us. Half an underground Is it indicator. like a foot long piece of rebar? Yeah, what is, I don't know what the size is. Oh, Depot has a whole chunk? bunch of sizes down there, but I would assume. We usually put half inch by a foot and we just bury it in. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I thought. Oh, how deep do you think it should go? Like six inches? Well, it depends upon if you have a super duper metal detector. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
depends on the metal content of the soil. Well, you buy, you buy a hundred twenty dollar metal detector, you might get down six inches. You buy an eight hundred dollar metal detector, you can get down a bit ferrous, non-ferrous metals. You can all, all kinds of stuff. I hope it's as low as twenty feet. <laughs> yeah. No, just it's, I mean, some of them are very expensive. They, they can go pretty deep. So I'm sure within a foot would be fine. Not, I actually you. have yeah, one. Six inches. That's uh, yeah, six inches. But I, I have one. I think it was three to four hundred dollars. So yeah. So six inches or so, just well, enough so it won't be undermined. This, this is feet. not really for this commission. This no. is for your next big project or the next person that moves into your house, and we'd have to look that up. And it would be the survey crew that would go and look for right. it. And so it's not right. really something that we're going to look for. It's not our metal detector because I think you might be done. You know. Yeah. I'm not leaving this. Job, yeah, so it's, it's, pretty, it's just not good. Good. You remodel and move, right? Yeah. You know how it works? Uh, and at that point, there'll be an app for that, right? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> May I ask what some of the other conditions are? I haven't seen them yet. I just. Sure. It's best not to be surprised. Um, <laughs> um, okay, special. Yeah, conditions. I sent them to Jack. I didn't send them to. Um, That's what hands here? Yeah. So on this, it asks that there's a pre-construction meeting. I talked to Steve about that. I actually have um, uh, the pre-construction site visit, which I'll, I'll hand to you at the end of this. Um, it says that the order needs to be recorded. It says that you have to um, take out the uh, leaf litter and seed that area. It says that you have to get a order of conditions. and. Um, you have to go to the Registry of Deeds and have that recorded, and you have to get an order, a uh, certificate of compliance, and then and have this process ended and have that recorded also. Gotcha. So you'll be going to the Registry of Deeds twice. Yep. You have to maintain your erosion control. If there's any problems, you'd have to call the Conservation Commission. Again, a project like this, this is probably a little bit more order of conditions than you're going to run into, but let's say you dug down and there was an oil tank, God forbid. You, you would have to contact us and let us know. You couldn't just take that out. Right. So that's in here, but it might be something that doesn't need to be uh, you know, ever, no, no, ever pulled out of there. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right. This is all new to me again, so yeah. I'm just no, asking. There's, uh, there's a condition that um, the construction debris needs to be uh, taken away within 30 days, and if you can't do that, it has to be uh, covered, or you have to uh, put some um, topsoil or blow on hydro seed on that. So uh, those are typically the conditions. Uh, and then it asks that you any any tree out there. This doesn't. This is not giving you the right to, to cut down any trees, other than what's on the plan now, which are none. Right. And it just says those trees within 25 feet of the zone of natural vegetation need to stay. And if they have to go, you have to ask the commission to gotcha. do that. Um, and then it just asks you, because you have that infiltration system, that you're going to put on roof gutters that have the, the overflow capacity yep. to that. And Jack is going to send me an operation and maintenance plan, which I will add to the file, and he'll probably send that to you also. So um, that actually hasn't come in yet. Uh, I think it may have on the last one. Did he send out, do you have an operation maintenance plan? Oh, did he? Is that what he was talking about? He put it on the plan? Uh, drainage and operation maintenance plan. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, there. So yeah. It, the same that you just said, the roof leader shall be equipped with the leaf guards, clean. Yeah. Uh, she'll have an overflow at the ground level, yeah. and then it goes on to talk about the driveway. So. Another condition is that the commission can enter the property during this project to check it out mm -hmm. for all these conditions. Uh, that's, that's pretty much. Oh, and there's a dewatering conditions. If you encounter water, if, uh, you have to set up your dewatering uh, area. I'm, and I'm not sure you may. And you have to be at least 60 feet away, which seems pretty much where the foundation is. So you'd have to be in front of the foundation to do any dewatering. Okay. So that's 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 really all. The, the rest is, I actually probably hit all of them. Okay, great, uh, thank you. It's, it's good to read that through though. Good to read that through as the homeowner. Um, it's all final because.
because that's what we use um, to do the final sign off right. when everything's done. Yep. So you should read it so there's no surprises. Great, thank you. Right. And if you have to change anything mid project, um, come see us first because there are opportunities for a minor modification depending on, you know, we assume it's going to generally go as you as you planned, but we don't like coming back to do a final sign off on a project and be surprised. Right. Okay, so if anything flares up, uh, feel free, if, if it changes the footprint, if it changes the layout, if it changes the drainage, if it changes what you're doing to the land, check in with Chuck. Okay. Yeah, so um, form, fit, or function, as we say, in the manufacturing world. So. Find a pot of gold, make sure you fill in the hole before you go to Bali. That was mine. I started saving when I was a kid. To deal with <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, Any other questions? questions? I make a motion to approve the order of conditions as amended. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? No. Passes. Let's sign it. Yeah. Sure. guys. Uh, LSP, a licensed site professional. I borrowed his super duper metal detector when I first walked in the house. I started walking around the backyard. Like every foot of them off here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so find little nuts and bolts, little pieces of farm equipment. Yeah. Finally, you know, just put it back in the box. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, no, I, need a, I need a huge screen and shaker and dig up my whole backyard. There's got to be millions of pieces of oh, stuff. Oh, nails, it, I'm sure. Oh, it tells them. I had to, I just, I had to stop. Yeah. And it asks them to read it. So um, I'm actually going to sure. just prepare this and hand it to you, right? You know, as soon as we, we finish up. So. Great. Thanks, Chuck. I appreciate that. Shut. So uh, is there a motion to close the meeting? Are we doing anything else? Or are we oh, just yeah, that's right. That's part of this, huh? Is there anything else? No, there's nothing else. Nothing else? Motion to close? Okay. Second. Those in favor? Okay. Meeting's over.